It was November 2022. <laughs> I'm at the park. I decided to come for a walk because like my juice fest hey, is over. This was the true beginning of my journey. I had just completed my 90 day juice cleanse and started the refeeding process. I had no idea how much my life would change from that point forward, but you know, I fully embraced it. The refeeding stage was a beast for me. I didn't know if I wanted to live up to everybody else's expectations or if I wanted to live up to my own, whatever that was. But I seriously felt like Forrest Gump in the movie when he was running and he gained all of these followers and then suddenly he decided to stop and everybody's like, where, where, where do we go now? What, do, what's next? And I, I felt that way. Like I seriously felt that way. And then I started thinking about, you know, if I decide to go raw, what does that mean in regards to my weight? You know, I lost 30 pounds on my, you know, juice cleanse. And it's like, do I want to lose more weight? Am I going to lose more weight? And so that kind of made me focus more on fitness. Moving my body wasn't just a habit. It became an obsession. I wanted to stay toned and fit, maintain my muscle growth, and possibly even build more. At that point in my life, I felt like I was in a battle without a clear target. I was simply going with the flow, enjoying life, and letting time guide me towards my next steps. Refeeding felt like an escape, giving me a bit more time to decide what I truly wanted to do and how quickly I wanted to pursue it. Looking back, if I could do it all over again, I probably would have invested more time in research. But I don't regret the trial and error. It shaped me into someone stronger, more resilient, and I genuinely adore that about myself. But the question still remained, where do I go from here? My anxiety was overwhelming, especially while sharing this journey for everyone to see and judge. So as you guys know, I haven't decided what my long-term diet is going to be. I was kind of straddling the fence on if I should go raw or just high raw or I just I'm really in between on what I want to do. As I began my raw journey with little experience and knowledge, I knew one thing for sure. Juicing was my go-to. I found myself shopping for produce daily because I couldn't figure out how long it would last and I was tired of throwing away so much food that had gone bad. Growing up, I was taught to shop in bulk, but that approach doesn't work well when you're eating raw. My frustration was building rapidly at this point. But you know what? I thought I was learning the most during those moments of frustration. Little did I know things were about to get even harder. Little old me had no idea what was to come. You're never truly prepared for anything. Showing the ugly side is just very important to me. And I know my dad would want me to continue on and not just fall into this like dark hole of depression. So I'm like trying to stay strong and I'm not going to cry because... Because this is my first time staying overnight since I changed my lifestyle in this way. So I want to bring you guys along because I do not know if it's going to be a disaster or if everything is going to go smoothly. But one thing is for sure, I'm traveling with my juices. I mean, well, my juicer. So we'll see how it goes. What a low point in my life. My YouTube channel was growing, opportunities were pouring in, and I was becoming healthier. But my mental health was struggling. In many moments, I was just wearing a mask. While I've always been about showing the raw, unfiltered side of things, I wasn't even ready to face it myself, let alone share it with the world. I was what they call a high-functioning depressed person. I would smile and laugh, but underneath it all, I was so broken and unhappy. 
So this is my first time ever sharing this. So I just want to throw out that disclaimer. But I remember when I first started my journey and decided to, you know, share it on social media, um, YouTube, and I started to grow as a content creator. I remember, you know, people telling me like, oh, you should really, you know, go with the black girl raw vegan narrative. And I'm just like, you know, I love being a black woman. I love showing up as a black woman I love everything about myself where I came from I love my history I love everything about you know just being a part of this community and when I say community I mean black community but I think it's obvious when I come on here and you see my face and you see my face is black and you see that I'm a black woman I think that's me showing up as a black woman I don't think I need to raise my hand to say hey look at me I'm a black woman and I'm a raw vegan and I, I just hate that people felt that I needed to do that because I feel like just me showing up is me saying that I'm a black woman and I'm here to not just show up for the black community, but also to show up for women and for men and for anybody else who wants to go raw. You know, this is a tough journey. I don't even remember half of 2023. 2023 was really rough for me. I wasn't even showing up on social media like I wanted to. I was in and out all the time I was taking months off at a time and I am so thankful for you continuing to come back and watch my content when I did post but it was very tough but what I do remember is that I never gave up I never stopped showing up for myself I never you know I had a moment I'm not gonna lie I did have a moment right after he passed away and it was about three weeks to a month that I started to eat cooked food again but it wasn't way off it was like roasted potatoes things like that but I was still on track let me tell you I bounced back really quick I had a wake-up call really early and I said you know if your dad was still living you would still be pursuing this and now that he's gone do you think that he would want you to you know just fall into depression and give up on your goals and it's like no he wouldn't want me to so I started to fight and I started to you know really push and make sure that I was staying on top of my diet that I was still working out like I wanted to and I am so thankful for for that moment although I miss my dad to death I can't even tell you I miss him so much but at the same time I learned so much from that situation and I just want to continue to be strong and push through also I want to encourage all of you guys to do the same because 2023 was a blur like I just don't even remember like I remember just eating clean and working out that was like basically my 2023 I didn't really travel like that other than going to like California but I really didn't do much you know so I hope this really encourage you guys who are really experiencing the unexpected some type of trauma that you're trying to get through it does not matter how you feel just keep going that's all you have to do is keep going because once you get past it let me tell you you're gonna reflect on those moments like oh my god I was in such a bad place but I am so glad that I never let myself go and that's what it's really about so you know one of the things that I remember is just always being in the grocery store every day all day <laughs> The truth is, it's hard work. Everything in my life changed. I shifted my focus to prioritizing mental health and simplifying life overall. I transitioned from a vibrant, colorful home and wardrobe to earthly tones and clothing that prioritize comfort over pleasing others. I craved discipline. I realized that true discipline requires more than just a change in mindset. It demands a change in environment as well. You'll soon realize that you're not just changing your diet, you're changing way more than that.
So another thing is that I love coming to Starbucks. It's my place of peace. It's such a vibe. And there is no food temptation because usually, you know, there's no other place out there other than a library. And you can't talk in a library. But Starbucks, you can talk, you can chill, you can do some work. And that's what I do. And also, I can bring in some outside stuff, which I love. Um, so I have some apple and cinnamon juice. I decided to switch it up because, you know, it's fall. And I love fall season. And during fall season... It's always about the apples. transition from simple juices to tasty mocktails infused with herbs and spices. Variety is truly key on this journey. One of the biggest lessons I've learned about food, herbs, and spices is that nothing is replaceable. You really need it all. Spices, herbs, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds because each one offers unique benefits. I drink tea religiously and sip on mocktails in the middle of the day like it's happy hour and I can feel the difference in my body and mind. I've made studying this lifestyle a priority. Yes, I read tons of books and I do research because I'm serious about maintaining and thriving in this way. I'm on a whole new level. I have so many go-to meals and dressings with my hemp seed spicy ranch alternative quickly becoming one of my favorites. I'm so intentional about my ingredients these days. I used to be a simple salt and pepper person, but now I rely on a variety of herbs and spices to create bold flavors. When you take the time to explore these flavors, you realize that the overuse of salt is often just your body craving real flavor. While we may not have all the answers about what our bodies need, our bodies are always telling us. We just have to pause, even in hunger, and listen. How can I heal you? How can I make you stronger? What do you need? This is how healing begins. This is how you get off medication. This is how you lose weight. It all starts here, right now. Begin your journey and incorporate these recipes into your life. My spicy hemp seed dressing drizzle over a fully loaded burrito is an absolute lifesaver. I've officially graduated from salads. I needed more and now I found it. Let's dive into my burrito recipe. I'll share the full recipe with you, but keep in mind, this is just one of many amazing recipes included in my Raw Vegan 2.0 bundle launching this Friday. One of the biggest challenges with a raw vegan lifestyle is not knowing what to eat, how to create balanced meals, and figuring out things like calories and protein. You won't know until you fully commit to the lifestyle. If you're not used to studying as if you're preparing for a big exam, this might not be the path for you. The relearning process is tough. It's what truly determines whether you succeed or struggle in this journey. We were never really taught how to eat healthy, so how can we expect to know without starting from the basics? Herbs and spices could easily have their own course, and fruits and vegetables are something you will get familiar with every step of the way until you become an expert. But don't be too hard on yourself. It all comes in stages, and each one gets you closer to where you want to be.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're craving more delicious recipes, my Raw Vegan 1.0 bundle is available now with over 50 recipes. And stay tuned, my Raw Vegan 2.0 bundle drops this Friday, featuring even more recipes with the twist that they all include herbs and spices. Don't be afraid to take that first step. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.